Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Ongava Game Reserve. It's exciting because we heard uh, some lions roaring earlier this morning, so we're trying to go out and find them. So come with me and let's go and explore. Hi, everybody. Um, we're joined here uh, by Steward. And um, right at the back of us, we've uh, come across some uh, lions. It's a great, great habitat for them. Um, of course, I'm sure they uh, they chose this location because they're trying to uh, to pounce on any antelope that uh, come in for a drink. So that's why um, it's a little bit tough to see them. What do you think, Stu? Yeah, they've obviously been here the, uh, from last night. Um, I've seen at least three young males in that yeah. thicket over there. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, as you can see, I mean, there's short, short shrub and pani everywhere. I mean, it's ideal habitat for lion. Um, antelope are going to have a real hard time picking them up. Yeah, um, the, uh, the, ambush, the ambush is set. They're, they're doing what, what typical lion do. They are resting in the shade. Um, so I'm pretty sure they're going to be here most of the day. Um, but difficult to see, you see how well camouflaged they are. Yeah. But it's, a, it's a great advantage for them and um, I'm sure, um, like you said, any, any antelope that comes across would not be able to pick them up and uh, that, that, that means that they could also be opportunistic, yeah. um, even if it's 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, um, which uh, they would still take that opportunity to, to go for something. Well, I mean, if you just think of that one male who's got his head up, if you put that head down and started to doze, yeah. You wouldn't see him walking in this <laughs> in this felt. No, you would really no struggle chance. to pick him up. And yeah, so, like you said, an opportunistic hunt would happen. Uh, as animals during, you know, they, generally antelope prefer to drink during daylight yeah. hours. So they will be coming down to water now. Yeah. Um, and you know, this is one of the main routes into this water point, this dam. And so they're perfectly positioned. Yeah. Um, obviously dependent on the wind, um, but they they may may very well be successful later. Yeah. Interesting fact about lion um, in Namibia, generally they're persecuted on, on, most, on most land apart from national parks and a few, yeah. a few game reserves. We are fortunate enough to be one of those game reserves who tolerate, I say tolerate, we actually enjoy having lion on Angava. Um, they're allowed to, to roam freely um, in the wild and to hunt and live uh, as if it was a national park. So. Is that there must be uh, some 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 pressure on the uh, on the wildlife like the antelope that they because uh, it's the game reserve is still uh, you know confined and you know although you allow them to come on um, you must have uh, some uh, management uh, program to, to try and keep the numbers at bay. Yeah, to try and stop them yeah. overpopulating. <laughs> yeah. um, the interesting thing that we have experienced with lion is they seem to. They regulate themselves socially, so as long as there's something to eat, the numbers can stay quite high. So yeah. we might see a, um, a steep decline in, for example, a prey species like wildebeest. They'll, they'll eat yeah. all of them, for example. Um, but their numbers won't change as long as there's a kudu or another wildebeest or something to, to, to eat yeah. and catch. Um, so when the, when the social structure becomes a little bit unstable, maybe there's lots of young males who, um, who are trying to assert their um, authority, they're being pushed out of the pride yeah. by the, by the, um, the adult male. Um, you get a lot of social upheaval and then you get a sort of fragmentation in these populations. And what we try to do with that as part of our management policy is we, we do try to move those um, young animals off on Gava. It is pretty difficult because as I said, you know, lions are generally not tolerated on private land, so that we're limited in where they can be taken, but we call it um, an, assisted, an assisted dispersal uh, program where young animals, males and females, who are you know being pushed out of the pride naturally, but have struggling to find a space, yeah. we then, um, with, with, um, with the help of the Ministry of Environment and Tourism, we work together, we then um, we catch those animals, so we dart them, we mobilize them, and we move them to areas um, around Namibia, which uh, tolerate lion and um, where they can they can start a new life. So some of them go back into Atosha, yeah. um, where there's gaps in the lions there. We have 
they've also sent line to um, Cowden in the northeast. So that process of, of trying to control numbers, um, it's an active process with, with a lion population. They are an incredibly difficult animal to manage because they're big predators and they, they have big impact on, on prey species. You know, they eat animals and they eat lots of them. Yeah. So most of their species that they prefer here is like wildebeest and uh, yeah. you've got great kudu, yeah. some mountain zebra since we're, oh. we're close to the hills here. It's, um, uh, it's expected to have some, uh, some of those. Yeah. Generally lions eat anything. I've yeah. seen them eat anything from a mongoose to a giraffe. Oh. But they will, obviously the, the rate of incidence or how, what animal they come into contact with the most is dependent on what's most dominant in our area. Um, so yes, around here you'd be looking at um, uh, kudu, mountain zebra, because of the hilly terrain, it's ideal habitat for browsers and animals that are associated with, 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 with hills. Um, so those animals would be coming down to this water hole and would obviously then be more likely to bump into these, um, these cats than say a zebra, which a, a normal plain zebra, which is norm we normally find out in, in our more open areas. They're, um, uh, they're incredibly good colonizers of areas and lions. So once, you've, once they've established themselves on a piece of la land, they, yeah. you know, they do very, very well. Um, and I mean, you can see they're pretty relaxed. I mean, they, they spend... Like all flat down on the ground. Uh, so that'll be them for the day unless yeah. something walks by. Wow. <laughs> yeah. It is exciting. Yeah, it's, it's cool because we, uh, as we drove um, up to this water source, we picked up on some fresh tracks and um, we were quite sure that they might have been somewhere, although we didn't see them. Um, we, we spotted them through the, through the big dense brush and here we are um, with them. Probably might see good sightings of them uh, in, in the coming days. Uh, we never know, but uh, still, this is a great uh, sighting, although they're not doing anything. They're doing what lions do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 23 hours out of 24 for sleep. Really, really patient um, in just looking at their behavior. Um, uh, just repositioned ourselves and actually getting a better view of these two lions. For the time being they're really relaxed but um, again this afternoon we're going to come out here to the same spot and just see what we can uh, expect from them. Maybe they might come out and just hang around the edge of the water, uh, the edge of the dam wall and uh, we can get some great interactions from, from the cat. Yeah, they. I don't really don't think they're going to go anywhere this, uh, today. They all look pretty full here. Okay. Two, three, one moving over there. It's amazing. I mean, you can you can smell you can smell the that uh, almost like rotten flesh. Um, it might it's it's coming from them, right? <laughs> it's just coming from them. Yes. <laughs> they might have, might have killed something in the area because. Uh, in, uh, yesterday afternoon we drove past this, we didn't see anything but um, it was dark but we could smell something like, like something's rotting. So it could have been these guys that killed and uh, spent some time feeding on that uh, animal and that's what we're kind of smelling at the moment. Well just also if you look at their condition they're all pretty fat. Yeah. So they've got full tummies. So I mean you can see this youngster lying out here, I mean yeah. he's, he's looking quite uncomfortable actually he's so full so a good chance that they they ate last night um, and they're gonna rest up for the rest of the day now and digest that it's incredible what uh, what you guys are doing on the game reserve and and of course you know to my knowledge as well lions are persecuted i think in southern africa um they're body parts have been sold as well you know so they, they're almost at an at an equal level as uh, as as rhinos that are disappearing um, and and if nothing has been done i think lions will also disappear um, off the continent uh, well i hope that never happens but yeah. i mean they are under threat range reduction is occurring all the time so 
it's just the nature of the animal. I mean, they are a, a very large, dangerous, dangerous cat. I mean, they yeah. kill your livestock. They can kill you. So the the conflict they create with human settlements yes. um, is significant, and people are scared of them. So you know, when you're when you when you're under threat, you yeah. you try to remove that threat, and so lions are killed because they are coming into conflict with animals and um, livestock animals and uh, and people. So by trying to allow allow them range on Angava, Angava they can move freely here they can breed yes. um, and we you know we are um, contributing to the sort of the meta population of lion in Namibia and their their future survival yeah, that's great yeah do you hear that young boy your future is secured <laughs> yeah. oh, so, uh, another one coming up I think they're getting a bit more relaxed around us uh, no, maybe not. not. <laughs> You've got a crowd. Yeah. But you know youngsters, that's how they are. Yeah, she's less happy yeah. with us. A little growl there. All right, everybody, we we'll, we'll, we'll try time, and give yeah. them some space. And uh, of course, come back in the afternoon to see some more um, great uh, interactions of these uh, the same pride that we found here all the youngsters are moving now they all got nice fat round tummies awesome yeah yeah the big boys still still lying down yeah oh wow it's dirty yeah Awesome, everybody. Great Stuart, starting. Thanks again for joining <laughs> us uh, this morning. My pleasure. Awesome. It's great. Uh, again, everybody, let's, uh, we'll come out here this afternoon and see what uh, these lions are doing. Maybe we might get some great interactions. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back onto the Ongava Game Reserve. We're out on, a, on an afternoon game drive and we've returned to the pride of lions that we have seen this morning. It seems that the sun is still hot, uh, temperatures are still a bit high and um, everyone is lounging in the shade. But of course uh, signs to watch out for what I'm looking at is a little bit of flickering of the tail, uh, things like grooming um, when they start licking their paws and these exaggerated yawning. Um, it's almost just sporadic uh, if that is a sign that they might start getting active and hopefully they'll walk towards the waterhole where we might go and see them um, in, in, in some good light and uh, perhaps all of them will be drinking. That'll be an awesome sighting. Um, at the moment what I'm, what I'm seeing there are, there are at least uh, two young males sub-adult males, one female, also a sub-adult lioness lying down flat and of course just a little bit out of view behind the shrub there might be some youngsters. Um, and of course uh, all of them really just hanging out together. Um, very curious as well so they were a bit um, curious to us arriving here looking at uh, what type of vehicle we're driving and all of that. You can see he's starting uh, to clean himself. Uh, I think from what they've eaten, uh, there might still be traces of blood um, on their fur. So that too, they groom him, just like little kitties back home. And of course, uh, Lions, like all cats, have got these backward pointing uh, barbs on their tongues and that is used to, to rake off any excess dirt from their skin and they, they like cleanliness. Sometimes they might groom each other, lick each other on the cheeks. And with one of the lionesses, the young female um, in, in the shade there, you can see she's got a really white belly 
and a lot of times if that catches sunlight uh, it, it does help uh, cool, cool yourself off because that reflects the sunlight. All right, everybody, we've uh, met up with the uh, lions at the water hole. It seems like they've, uh, they've all had a good drink. And uh, judging by the way they're lying around and uh, a little bit of tail flicking, the black tuft on their tails always tell you something about their behavior or how they feel at certain times. And um, as they're just settling in, we're still around. Um, it just also gives a clear indication that uh, they're not really settled yet. But being familiar with the area, um, of course, there's still some light um, available. And they just don't want any an antelope or zebra, the late uh, stragglers coming in for a drink, to see them. And uh, that's why it could also be another reason that lying down flat could also um, obscure themselves and um, not give the antelope a visual of the lions. And um, although they're still, you can see them um, lying down quietly, the ears are still flickering, um, which also gives a clear indication that they're well aware of what they hear. Any little uh, snap from a hoof can give them an indication uh, which direction an antelope is coming from. And um, of course, like with the rhinos, we have the sun setting, the uh, cold air is coming in, and um, that also brings the smells, the sounds um, quite clear to them. So that's also another reason why keeping still, lying down flat, um, gives them that sense. And you can see um, clearly on those lions lying down, facing us with their bellies, and nice pale and white. And that's what I was mentioning about the uh, reflection of the light on some hot days. Sometimes they can go on their backs um, if they're quite hot. That allows them to cool off, just reflecting a little bit of that hot sun. As we can slowly see the light fading, this also uh, brings us to a, a great end of another adventurous day. And um, what a day to end it off with these couple of lions here. I feel hopeful for them. Probably something might come in. They might have another snack. But uh, that's another prediction of mine. All right, everybody, thanks a lot for joining us this afternoon. What a great end to a wonderful day. And um, just uh, tune in tomorrow for another adventure.